Hello, my name is Edward, and I no longer consider myself someone who suffers from avoidant personality disorder. First of all, I'm not a doctor or a therapist, and I think that if you need a therapist, you feel you need someone to talk to, you need to go to a psychiatrist, that's a strong thing to do. It's a sign of strength, it's not a sign of weakness, so ask for help if you need it. I did not. I did this through my own research over 20 or 30 years, and this video will explain how. First of all, if you're not familiar with avoidant personality disorder, I've included some links below that I found very helpful. Um, and if you just want to skip my origin story, I'm going to provide a timestamp here for the uh, cure. So avoidant personality disorder is believed to have genetic as well as environmental causes. In my case, I think both played a part. I believe my mom had it. She was extremely uncomfortable going to parties, events. We rarely went to them, but when we did, she was very uncomfortable. She also, when I was a kid, was a stay-home mom. She stayed home to take care of us when we were little, uh, but she didn't have any friends. She never, she didn't have any friends. She never left the house pretty much except to do errands. Uh, anyway, I'm diagnosing her. I know that's kind of silly, but, um, yeah, I feel like that played a part for me as well as the rejection of my father. I was a very feminine little boy. My dad was a big sports fan. He was very disappointed in me, it was clear. He had a daughter, and then he had a son, and I was a big disappointment in terms of being a son to him. I recall one day going to give him a kiss on the cheek, a goodnight kiss, and the look of horror on his face, he flinched. And uh, yeah, that was the last time I ever did that. I don't recall ever being hugged or told I love you as a kid by either of my parents. And I do remember specifically one time when I, as a little boy, five or six years old, interested in fashion and drawing a sketch of a skirt and shirt ensemble, and my dad coming over to ask me uh, what I was doing, what I was drawing, and when I said a shirt and a skirt, he um, was very upset, and he said, oh, that's, um, so that's something girls do. And yeah, yeah I shut down. Uh, in school, I was bullied quite a bit. I remember being excited to go to school before I went to school. My sister was older than me and she would wait for the bus and I would wait with her and want to get on the bus and go. And as soon as I was old enough and I went to school, I soon learned that all the other kids thought I was a weirdo. They would call me a girl and pick on me, I got, uh, I became very self-conscious, terrified to speak. Uh, every time I had to speak in class, I would turn bright red. Um, 
I develop nervous habits of rocking back and forth and constantly pulling up my socks. I think that was just a coping mechanism, just wanting to not be there, escape. I didn't have any friends at all through school. I would hide, if possible, during lunch in the bathroom and at recess when we had to go outside and play with other people. That was a disaster. I hated it so much. I would walk around by myself and like pick up rocks around the <laughs> perimeter of the playground. And uh, yeah, sometimes a teacher would come over and try to get me to play with the other kids and bring me over to the boys playing basketball and that was even worse. Please just leave me alone. Um, yeah, so anyway, I, I grew up not knowing how to communicate, how to function in society, not having any social interaction, just always keeping to myself inside my own head. And uh, yeah, so that translated to what I believe to be avoidant personality disorder. Um, yeah, after, after I grew up and I had to go to work, that was always difficult for me as well. Just functioning in a workplace, especially if it was a retail job those were the hardest because strangers would come in constantly and I was expected to engage with them and suggest things for them and to engage with people for me was was a struggle to begin with but then to suggest things and then fear them not liking what I was suggesting and be rejected or or ridiculed by them for my choices that was very rough. So I had a cycle of trying to work, and I've worked through the years, but um, if a job would get too tough, I would quit. And yeah, I quit many jobs because they were just too hard. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. And not that the job itself was hard, but just functioning, you know, when I had to work with other people. That was the hard part. So, uh, yeah, eventually I hit rock bottom and I knew that I needed to find some type of answers. When I hit rock bottom and needed help, it was the 80s and it was the time of bookstores and audio books, books on cassette. <laughs> and I had a cassette player in my car and I found Marianne Williamson's lectures. Um, and I found them very helpful. I, I became obsessed with Marianne Williamson's lectures and I would listen to them constantly every time I was driving my car and then I had a cassette player in my house and I would listen in my house and that was the first step in my getting some type of help with my uh, my emotional issues my personality issues um, that led to exploring other things like quantum physics, Deepak Chopra, The Secret, all of these um, spiritual, scientific subjects that told us that we are more than just this life on this earth that in my physical body 
this is just a small part of who I really am, that I am a spirit, a soul, and I am here to learn and grow. Uh, I became familiar with Dolores Cannon's work, and I love Dolores Cannon. May she rest in peace. She, uh, her work really changed my life a lot. It's a lot about reincarnation. And uh, yeah, I know a lot of people think that's craziness, but to me it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense that we are a soul and we come here on this planet to learn and experience, experience being a human being and feeling and seeing and touching and smelling. And uh, But that's not who we truly are. We are just awareness. We are consciousness and that, that never dies. We are eternal and that this is just a little part of our lives. I also discovered Avoidant Personality Disorder on YouTube thanks to some very informative <laughs> videos by professionals which I've linked below. Um, and that was for me the final piece of the puzzle. For me, learning that this was a real disorder that people experience and the causes of it and that the childhood trauma that I went through and potentially the genetic factors um, that it it kind of told me that it wasn't my fault and for some reason that kind of set me free feeling like this was a real genuine thing that I wasn't the only person in the world that could not function could not talk in a meeting without my face turning bright red could not go to a party and just mingle with people I worked in a job where it was a pretty good job um, I was good at it except when I had to talk in a meeting my face would turn bright red we would have events with clients and every time we'd have an event everyone would be out talking to the clients and mingling and having a glass of wine and I would be in my office hiding because I just couldn't and uh, knowing that there were other people that that had the same issue for some reason that just freed me I said you know what it's not my fault this is a normal thing and I can change it now that I know now that I know I can take action and I took action um, again I'm not saying I'm super strong and better than you if you can't do this yourself seek help seek therapy if you need it please ask for help if you need it um, I did not but my help came through years and years of Deepak Chopra, Marianne Williamson, uh, all of those, all of those sources. Recently, uh, I had to get a job where I am back out in the public. Uh, I was teaching online, the laws changed, um, everything changed and I'm no longer able to do that and so you know you gotta you gotta pay the bills so I <laughs> went out <laughs> and I got a job and it's a job that where I talk to the public every day with clients and with my co-workers obviously and um, it's different now I'm able to find inside myself a different part of myself, the part of myself that 
as an avoidant you always want to connect with people you want to have friends you want to socialize but you're just so inhibited that you can't I've I've been able to unlock that part of myself we recently had an event and on my way there I was I don't know about this I don't know about this I got there I immediately started connecting with people I was walking up to people hi I'm Edward what's your name you know welcome thank you for coming and I would have conversations I was the life of the party and this is the part of myself that I always wanted to access but never could as an avoidant and um, so I no longer use that term I no longer call myself an avoidant and I think that's part of it as well, is not staying stuck in that by labeling myself as someone with avoidant personality disorder. Now, obviously, I never got technically diagnosed. I diagnosed myself. So, you know, keep that in mind. If you've been diagnosed with avoidant personality and you're not able to break break through, don't beat yourself up. But <laughs> don't don't say, "Oh, this guy on YouTube said I he could do it. Why can't I do it?" That's not the point of this video. I just want you to be open to the possibility that you can access. You can access that part of yourself that you always knew was was there, and that you just some somehow couldn't get to, because that's what I did. And that's it. That's all I wanted to say today. And uh, I hope this helped you in some way. And uh, yeah, if it did, uh, follow me. Dis uh, describe no some. <laughs> subscribe and um, I will be putting out more content and uh, hopefully it helps somebody because that's what life is all about is being part of this human race and doing our best to help ourselves and then extend that out to others so thank you I'm Edward Thank you so much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, that's amazing. Thank you. And I will see you again.